Hey there, my name is Rocco and welcome to my channel where I do Daz 3D video tutorials to help you to get the most out of your renders. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement diffuse or soft lighting into your scenes uh, and to show you the benefits of using it over just using the default hard light that you get when you add a spotlight or a point light into your scene. Now, if you're not quite sure by what that means, then don't worry too much about it. Uh, instead, just take a look at these two side-by-side -side images of the same scene lit by the same single light source. Uh, as you can see on the left, this is the type of hard light that you get, albeit a little exaggerated, as the default when you add a light source into a scene. And over onto the right, we can see the soft light version after we've diffused the light somewhat. Now, I have mentioned this technique previously in a couple of other videos, uh, but I do get people asking me about it still, so I figured it probably needs a video in and of itself, just so that it's there for people to look at whenever they need it. So if we take a little look at our scene, we've got obviously our model here. Uh, I've tried to show as much flesh as I can, just so you can see the shade and as best as you can do. Uh, if we move across to the render settings, you can see that we're just on scene only in the environment mode, which means that only the lights in the scene will show. And if I just have a quick top down view, you can see we've got the model, we've got our camera and the only light in the scene is this spotlight that I've put in over here. And so if we come across to the uh, NVIDIA iRay preview uh, with our scene lit up, you can see I've got the spotlight uh, selected up here and down on the light tab on the tabs down the side, we're just looking at the, the sliders that are available for that particular spotlight. Now there's only three or four things that we need to look at here. We need to look at light geometry here, which is default set to point. Uh, we've got the height slider there. We've got the width slider. And of course we've got the luminous flux slider down here, which is what determines how bright the light is. Now at the moment, it's hard to see that because it's cutting it off. At the moment we've got our light set at, what's that, 500,000 lumens uh, to give us this nice bright light that we've got here. But the problem is, is these really dark shadows that we've got. Really hard, really harsh shadows, uh, which makes things look a little bit ugly let's face it uh so if we go back to the light tab as i said the things that we need to look at are point uh, light geometry sorry height and width importantly now if we click on point we can see that there's a whole load of options here now all of these work realistically the same uh, i don't really see much difference between them if somebody can explain it then you know teach me something for a change uh but rectangle is all that i really need to go across to when i do this and i click on rectangle now it'll do a little bit different, but it won't look much different when we it resets. And when now what happens is the height and width sliders become important and they become usable. Uh, and what I'm going to do for this image, I'm going to take the height diameter and I'm going to set that up to a thousand and I'm going to do the same with width also. Now what we've done there is we've taken that point light, which is a single point in space where all the light is, is shining out of and we've made it a thousand by a thousand i'm going to say centimeters a thousand by a thousand centimeters so we've spread out all of that light that was coming out of that single point and we've now got it coming out of a thousand by a thousand square so the same light is coming out spread out over a wide area and that's why when we look at our image everything has now gone dark or dim and so to compensate for now for that dimness that we get is we have to come down to the luminous flux again. And at the moment that's at 500,000. I think I just need to change that 50 to 100 to 100 and it should compensate. Nope, I need to add another zero in there. Uh, so now what we've done, we've compensated for the, the light being spread out over a wider area so that we can get the same levels of brightness. But as you can see now, the shade is starting to get a lot softer and a lot more diffuse that that transition from the lit part of the model skin into the shaded area of the skin is now more of a gradient it goes gradually from from lit to dark and as i say the reason for that is the larger the surface area the softer that light becomes you know if we just have this little top down view look that we've got here uh when we've just got a point light and it's coming from a point all of the light is just coming along this one little corridor this little cone that comes out from the spotlight and so it's intense it's bright and it's creating these harsh shadows that we see 
However, when we increase the surface area, the, the light is actually coming from all of these different areas and these different angles into where our model is. And what's happening, that light is creeping around the contours of our model's body, spreading a little light into those darker areas that we'd normally get if we were just using the point, lightening up and just gradually creating that, that, that gradient from, from lit areas into dark shaded areas. And so that's how we make the light a little bit softer and make those shadows not so deep, uh, just by increasing the surface area of the light. Uh, now, it's particularly important if you regularly see this type of effect in your, in your images. OK, again, this is a little bit exaggerated, so you can see what I mean. But we've got our model in an environment and we, and we want to light up the front of our model because things are maybe a little bit too dark. Uh, now, OK, there's better ways to do it than sticking a spotlight in front of it, but we can see all this shadow behind the model which really shouldn't be there uh, but when we increase the surface area of the light the shadow goes out but we still light up the model same light just increasing the surface area gets rid of those ugly shadows that we don't want in our images anyway i hope you've gotten something from this video and i hope it's helped you out a little bit uh if so give it give the like button a smash down below as it really helps me out big time with the youtube algorithm it actually tells youtube that i'm a better youtuber than what i actually am so that's not bad uh, and of course if you haven't already uh, make sure you hit subscribe and the little notification bell down below so you don't miss future videos uh, if you've got any comments or any questions about this video, lighting in general or about Daz, or you just fancy a little bit of a chat, uh, drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So for now, I'll catch you later. I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.